Hey everyone, this is Fady from Heartbeat Productions and welcome for another video. Today I'm doing a video a little bit different than normal. I'm gonna walk in the control room. I'm gonna invite you guys to join me. And today's video, I want to address the ultimate vocal chain, analog vocal chain. We'll do a separate one for a digital vocal chain. But I wanna walk you guys through my current vocal chain, what I use for vocal chain, uh, things that I loved, things that I uh, not so much, and things that I've learned over the years with vocal chain. Obviously, first thing in your vocal chain would be your microphone. Um, I've gone through a long series of different mics. I started with uh, the Slate ML1 and the Sphere uh, as an emulation mics, and then I switched to um, Lawin Audio, the Atlantis, which I love that mic, and then uh, recently I switched also to the Neumann U89, um, and also Neumann U67. Um, the U89, I would say it's a very underrated mic. Um, I don't know why not a lot of people are not using it. Uh, it's like the little brother of the 87 with more polar pattern and a, lo um, and a little bit more smoother top end. So it actually works really well if you have a female singer or somebody who is a little bit brighter tone and you wanna tame that little bit of harshness of the top end the 89 actually works real well. That's why a lot of studios, we used to use the 89 for strings and brass section and a lot of orchestral work because they, it tames all the harshness of that top end from the strings, violins, and from the brass section. Um, since I got the U67, which is the Neumann tube mic, um, this mic has been my favorite. So as of right now, this is my main go-to for vocals, and I would alternate between that and the U89. Um, but so far I would say the 67 won almost every single time. After my 67, depending on the singer, I normally go to my pre, and I would choose one between those. So my first set of pre's are my 4710D, and you can switch between, you guys can see here, tube and solid state. So I really like that feature. I really like those pre's. They're good pre's, but I wouldn't say that they're like one of the best. Um, they have like basic features as mic line. Um, I like these for drums. I've been using these a lot for toms and they have some really warm tone to them, which I really like. And my second set here is the infamous the UA6176, which basically this section is the 610 Pre, and then this section is the 1176 Compressor. Um, absolutely love that one. I use it all the time um, on vocals. Um, a lot of times I would actually, if I'm going for a super clean tone, I would pull this all the way back to negative, and I would crank the level. And that way I get super clean, not a lot of tube saturation when I'm tracking, and if I wanna push a lot of saturation, I would crank that gain and then pull the level back or all what is in between. Still trying to like that EQ as much, but uh, I used the Pultec over that one, but it's still good to have if you want an extra EQ. So this one is the Super 8, which are eight channels of 1073, just the mic pre's, and then some phase and low cut and phantom and DI. Um, but then that one is the 473, which is from Vintec Audio. They're four channels, and they have actually a little bit, a simple EQ. You guys can see here, you got 60 hertz, 220 hertz, and then you can choose uh, that low end EQ, boost or cut, and then for the high end, for the top end, you got 3.2K, and you got 12K. And then he got different impedance, mic in, line in. So it's just really simple, basic EQ. And then the last set of pre's, this is the WA-412, which is Warm Audio's version of the API. Obviously, before we go to that one, 1073s, they're 1073s. They're very well known for their grid. They have a lot of punch, a lot of grid to them, which is amazing, I love it. Um, but one thing I've learned about them and I've noticed, if I have a very, very strong singer uh, that I'm gonna have to pull back the gain a lot on that singer, and if that singer is gonna be belting and doing all these really strong high notes, I've noticed that using a tube mic like the U67 and combine that with the 1073, sometimes I get a little bit too much saturation, more than I would like. Um, more like overdrive, 
and it's more than my preference. Uh, for specific songs for pop and some rock songs that I want that drive and saturation, that's great. But for some other songs, I don't. Uh, and that's when I would actually switch to the 610 or the Worm Audio 412 because they have such a clean, clean signal. So let's go back here to the Worm Audio. So right here, you guys see on the Worm Audio, you got on each pre, you got Phantom Power, on and off and then you got that little tone and i love that thing basically tone on or tone off and then what it does is that tone off it's a clean it's kind of sounds like a, a clean api or clean ssl it got no color to it you capture what you get you get what you capture which is cool but especially if you have a really nice mic and i don't want any coloration i only want the microphone coloration so in this case would be the u67 coloration and i'm not adding any more color from the pre then i would go with the tone off then tone on adds tons of drive almost exaggerated i've not used that feature on vocals but i've actually used that feature a lot on drums snare and kick and i've also used it on electric guitar to add more saturation and drive to an electric guitar too dirty up a little bit of a clean signal and i really liked it it was actually pretty cool so this is kind of walking through the microphone pre's of my setup and then as you guys can see here i have the flock audio patch bay so all my pre's are connected to the patch bay and then from the patch bay i get to tell it where to go and i would say 99 percent of the time my next would always be my pull tech so I would go to my Pultec EQ, and then I would, uh, depending if it's a guy or a girl, if it's a girl, a lot of times I would attenuate a little bit of the 10K, and then I would boost somewhere around the 12 to 16 to give them air. And then I would uh, boost a little bit of 100, and then cut, attenuate at the same time as well. Cool thing about that, this is the Audioscape version of the Pultec. Cool thing about this thing, I've honestly tested it one time I was tracking a guy and he wanted a super bright vocals and I got that 5k which normally and not a frequency I would want to boost a lot on a guy's male vocal but then I literally boosted all the way to eight so it's almost all the way to the end and it still was smooth because of the tubes the way that that EQ is being set up I just don't know what they did to it it's absolutely phenomenal and you can push a vocal on it and you don't have to worry about it. It still sounds absolutely amazing. It's the famous uh, Pultec EQ. Then normally after that, I would go to a fast attack compressor. And in my setup, I got one or two that I use. I either use my 1176, and I would go for maybe around six here for fast, and then a little faster release around six or seven. And then I would adjust my input and output that I would get maybe about negative five to seven dB of reduction at the highest or the loudest part of the song. And I would do around four uh, ratio, four to one ratio. And I kind of try to make sure that when this unit is on or off, the levels are about the same. I'm not getting any volume from this because I don't want to bring any more floor noise. My second choice after this has been my API. I'll take you guys here. So my 2500 plus, and then on that unit, it's a stereo unit, so I would just... It's a stereo unit, so I normally just uh, use the left channel. And I go and I go to the new, not the old. So the new is more aggressive and it acts like an 1176. And I would go to a faster attack. And then I would go either 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 ratio. And then I would go to a faster release. And then I would adjust my threshold until I hit a reduction of the same thing, 5 to 7 dB. And then uh, this unit has auto makeup gain. I, I, I like to always leave it on the auto makeup gain. And there's been a few times where I've actually used both. Uh, I ran the 1176 and I also ran the API. And I, instead of re reducing 7 or 8 dBs all from one, I did maybe 3 dB reduction from one and another 3 dB reduction from one. Um, and each has its own tone and punch that is slightly different and obviously whichever you like. The next I always go to a slow attack compression. So right here you guys will see my warm audio and this is my 2A which is their version of the LA 2A which is a very famous 
which is a very famous tube compressor. And then I try to do um, about maybe three dB reduction at tops. And I wanna make sure that obviously I'm not getting any extra gain from the unit. So I turn it on and off, bypass, make sure that uh, it's good to go. And I don't have any boosted gain from that compressor. This unit is a lot cheaper obviously than the 2A. Honestly, I still like that one more than the plug-in. I've used cheaper versions from other companies that I wasn't happy with, but this one, I think it's about 1,000 or 1,100 uh, bucks, is still, in my opinion, a lot better than a plug-in. Then after that, I normally go to my tape saturation, which I use the Neve right here on my desk. So this is the Neve 542, which is really cool because it has, so the top section right here, so this is a trim, then after that, I got a tape. And on the tape, you got two settings, 15 and 30 IPS, and then you got saturation, how much tape saturation you're including in the blend between the dry signal and the wet signal, which is really cool. And then you also get the Neve Silk texture, and you get the red, which is a little bit more brighter and punchier, and then the blue, which is a little bit warmer. And then here is the texture of the silk, how much you do, which I love that. I use that a lot. The tape adds a little bit of low end, depending on the 30 adds less low end than the 15, um, which is, it's good, but if, if I'm tracking like a low male or something, I normally don't use the tape. But if I'm tracking a female and I wanna add some warmth and bottom end to her vocals, I would do this. And then a lot of times I actually run through the SSL Fusion, I know it's a stereo unit, uh, so I run it just mono, like the left channel, and I actually turn everything off except for the SSL transformer. And because I just want, what I'm trying to go for is I just want that SSL color and tone that is a very famous SSL color that sometimes I like that and I want that. And then after that, it goes to my converters on my interface. Right now I'm using my Antelope Orion Gen 4, and then I just print that into my DAW. Cool thing about what I, a lot of times I do, is, this is a lot of processing. Like by the time these vocals are printed in my DAW, all what I really need to use in my DAW, I use a Pro-Q EQ for surgical removing specific frequencies that I just wanna surgically remove out without adding any color or anything. And then I would use uh, a de because I don't have an analog de in here. Technically, you could use the high frequency compressor from the SSL Fusion, but it doesn't work as good as a de in my opinion. It works better for a mix bus, but not for a vocal take. And then uh, I would use, uh, after a de on my DAW, I would use something like a Soothe uh, for just kind of rounding up the vocals, getting rid of a little bit of harshness here and there, and that's pretty much it, and then verbs. Uh, so my vocal are pretty much good to go and I don't have to do anything to it done. Um, I hope this vocal chain kind of help gives you an idea of how I track my vocals in here. If you have any questions or a uh, question about any of these units, question about your vocal chain, what's your setup look like, make sure you put the, your questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer any of them and I'll see you guys at the next video.